Um, first of all, I, I, I did not realize that this uh, top fill, what is it, Chantel? Um, Chantel Ackerman. Acker? Yeah, Chantel Ackerman. I didn't realize this was like a three and a half hour film. So I, I, re I rewatched Repulsion, uh, Roman Polanski's Repulsion last night. And I watched this uh, uh, this morning. And uh, I'm not sure, Dan, if you ever get this like feeling when you watch a movie. So first of all, one thing that's kind of surprising is uh, many movies that you watch that turn out to be, you know, not good or just mediocre or whatever, they often have um, still either interesting or like a little bit daring uh, beginnings, right? There's like the first few seconds or maybe the first uh, couple of minutes that that seem like they might go in a really good direction. Uh, I think more often than not, uh, the, the the problem is not even like to, to find, uh, you know, to do that part well. It's really how everything tends to devolve over time. And specifically with uh, this film, where I'm just going to call it by, um, I guess, the uh, short name. What is the short Gene name? Gene Dealman. Yeah, let's just call it a, a, a Gene a Dealman. Um, like when it begins, right, there's nothing, there's nothing inherently. So first of all, the film itself, I wouldn't call it, you know, bad in the traditional sense of like a bad movie. Right. Um, but it, it's a movie that's just obviously way too long and says a uh, far less, uh, given its uh, runtime than something like, uh, uh, repulsion. But in the first few minutes, right, we just have this kind of domestic scene where she just kind of like puttering around the house um, something like that often has like, uh, it, it, it could, it could be the start of something good when she, uh, eventually takes like some John into her, her bedroom, right? This is unexpected. The fact that it's uh, filmed with this kind of, you know, a door closing and that it's uh, darker suddenly and it's opening again. I mean, you know, that, that's all technically uh, well done. Um, then there's like other parts where her son comes home and, they're just kind of sitting around and for a long time, you know, no one is speaking. Right. So that's definitely, you know, it, it's not the sort of thing where you have like most filmmakers who are putting in these details for no reason here. There is a reason, you know, it's clear, right? The reason is we're just going to show uh, both of their characters. We're going to show what they're dealing with specifically here. It's like, they don't really seem to have too strong of a relationship. Um, there's no like, there's very few cliches in the film, uh, except when there's that second kind of more extended conversation with the son where he starts saying some you know, trite things about belief in God, that kind of thing, whatever. Uh, but, um, you know, it's just like a, a film that's mostly kind of formless, right? That's kind of a, 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 the, 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 and generic for that reason, right? It's not, it's not a classically bad film, right? There's just not much to it. Well, I, I mean, when you look at, I was looking at the, a couple of days ago, uh, some YouTube channels reviewing it, uh, some young kids seeing it, and some of them say, oh, you know, they use the same static shots like Yasujiro Ozu does in his great films, <clears throat> or, or, you know, things like that. And I'm like, well, uh, number one, uh, I, I, well, you mentioned repulsion, and I said that you know this is basically just a, a, a variant of repulsion. Uh, it's it's uh, like you said, technically not bad. There are scenes going down the hallway that remind you almost of the hallway in uh, The Shining, uh, in, in the, the Overlook Hotel, um, and up and down the elevator, and this and that. And th she goes through three days, I think it is, of uh, of the, doing the same thing and we see the same thing and we're breading chicken or veal or whatever it is and we're doing this and we're, we're sewing something and there's clearly some kind of bizarre relationship between her and her son uh quasi-sexual i mean i i don't know any mother and and child that would have that kind of a relationship not that they're having sex but there's clearly something off between them um and <clears throat> you know then we then she gets in the second act or the second day she gets a little bit wackier starts I, what does she do she like carries stuff around uh, that she shouldn't be and you know the the seams are fraying yeah. and then overcooks the potatoes, potatoes that kind of thing it's like yeah. domestic stuff you know yeah and then and then by the third day you know uh, basically the the big revelation is oh this is a portrait of a murderess. Uh, to mm -hmm. use the term of, of the 1970s. And with repulsion, you, we know she's a murderess uh, uh, early on. We know there's there's also something wrong. We Wait, what do you mean by early on? With, in repulsion? Yeah. Uh, we 
the first murder of the of is it the boyfriend that she kills is, is something like that. Like, but, but, but that's, that's like, like halfway so that's what, i mean it's well, that's, that's a relatively yeah. early yeah. on rather than literally the last mm -hmm. three minutes of this film a three yeah. and a half hour film are uh, relatively early on <laughs> but we know there's something wrong with her the the catherine Deneuve character um you know we, we there's the time where she pricks an old lady's finger and sees i think a drop of blood or something like that um it, it reminds me of a, a famous scene from uh both the original Dracula with uh, with uh, Bela Lugosi and also from Nosferatu, where Nosferatu sees a drop of blood, um, we get we get the sense that she's off just by the way she sees things, and then we slowly get the you know we uh, we end up with the arms grabbing, and so we're put in the sense here. Now here we're outside of Gene Dealman, um, and 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 the thing too is though uh, I I. I I, I also watched like Cleo from five to seven, another famous French film that rose high up the scale. Uh, and uh, and uh, then that, hey, Jess, who did Cleo from five to seven? Agnes Varda. Agnes Varda. And then, then we watched, well, we watched that other Agnes Varda one. Uh, what? The the one the one that was in in color with the the, the couple and the guy cheats. Yeah, Le Bonheur. So, uh, so I, I've watched a number of like of female French filmmakers, and Belgian. oh, she was Belgian. Sorry, um, uh, but uh, it, it, it's one of these things that you can see in so many ways. Uh, and I know Roman Polanski is a white male, and he he's a sex abuser and a rapist and whatnot, but he's also a far better filmmaker than Chantal Ackerman. I mean, you can't watch if you watch these two films. It's it's maybe about 60% of the time. I, I forget. Repulsion is what, an hour and 45? Less than two hours. Yeah, hour 45, yeah. Yeah, so it's basically about half the length. And it says so much more. You, you, mm -hmm. And, and it, what it doesn't say draws you in. That final shot of, of the young Catherine Deneuve looking off you know the little girl looking off what's she looking at what i mean that that's that's technical here it seems like they they shot and at the end oh uh she's gonna fuck her third john and then he he you know he he's being a little boorish in the bed and then she's gonna kill him but we don't even see the fucking blood i mean we don't we don't even get any sense of real so it's not even a realistic film now people the, the, well, you, I, I think I, maybe not in the scene itself, but you definitely see the blood when she sits down. Uh, her, you know, her shirt is covered in blood, yeah. that kind of thing. Well, yeah, but I mean, I, I mean, she goes into the jugular; it would spray. Mm -hmm. you, you, you could get. I mean, the, that's what blood pressure is. It's going to spray out like a, a fire hose. Um, uh, and so, uh, you know, uh, there are things. I, watching it, I, I said there, there are some interesting things. If the scenes were cut down more, if they if, if it was edited better, that that you know maybe you staggered some of these scenes a bit more uh, in her memory. Is are we seeing things in real time, or is this is this a memory or something? I, I was thinking of Stardust Memories uh, and and the Dory scene where you know we see Dory's breakdown through you know the, the way Alan cuts it. Um, and and just to give you an example too, yesterday I I finally got. Uh, uh, Rosalind Gallopin, this kid who's on the E list, who I think you've contacted or been in contact with. Have you been in contact with Rosalind? Yeah, he's also a patron. Yeah, yeah. And so, Ro so Rosalind sent me uh, uh, the other side of the wind, the last film of of Austin Wells, and it's a it's a it's a really good film. I, I think it's probably a great film. I have to watch it again. It's it's so far above Gene Dealman. It's not even close. I, I'm. I mean, the, watching the the Wells film, it's like Wells. I mean, my God, uh, the, the, really, there's only there's only Kubrick and Wells as as the greatest of the American directors. Woody Allen has has a number of great films, but he doesn't have the consistency, and he he aped himself. And Cassavetes just doesn't have the numbers or whatnot. But, but watching this, and if you if you've ever gone and watched Chimes at Midnight, which, I mean, they, they, I mean, John Huston is just phenomenal in this role i mean it, it, it's and it it's well we, we, i'll talk about that more but it's just so far above cinematically uh gene dealman it's like what the fuck are you talking about and when people see these lists you know what's going to eventually happen people are going to say but well, this is bullshit this is shit you know because i'll tell you there's a lot of film students who could make better gene dealman's than chantal ackerman 
but but there's not a film student right now that could make a film the way uh, Orson Welles did when he was 55, 60 doing this film, when, when he was a full-fledged master. I mean, it, it's just a joke, and it, it makes these sight and sound and any kind of polls like this. When they put out, uh, again, I wouldn't say it's a terrible movie, but I would say it's it's a dull, boring, mediocre movie at its best. Yeah, like even uh, in, in the notes that I was saying, so these are my notes for Repulsion last night, right? It took uh, an entire page, and here's a film that's literally twice as long. It took up uh, half a page, right? Um, and because at a certain point, it's like you could literally turn away from what's happening on the screen a lot of the times because yeah. nothing is actually revealed by some of the length of the shots. I guess you could say that, all right, so we're getting at some of the, you know, boredom, right? Maybe we're getting some resentment in her face, that kind of thing. But I think uh, what, what really struck me here in terms of the differences between this and Repulsion is in Repulsion, uh, you could sort of make the argument that, um, you know, both of them are about uh, if you want to have like any kind of like feminist reading or whatever, like you could you could apply a feminist reading to both. But uh, the di the difference is that the way that we get to the ending in one film versus the other, in Repulsion, it's totally logical, right? It, in the realm of uh, who um, uh, Carol was her name, uh, who, who Carol is, right, as a character, right? You know that there's something uh, uh, off about her, right? Uh, you know that she has all these uh, sexual hangups. Um, and also, like, honestly, like, ha at, at the halfway point uh, in Repulsion, when she kills uh, her, her boyfriend, uh, she had, like, 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 think about it. Um, what's fascinating is that the very, uh, like, right before he breaks down the door, there's that, or right, right after he breaks down the door, there's that woman with the dog, that neighbor that comes out, and she's just kind of, like, staring at him, like, okay, like, what the hell is going on here? And it's just this guy that's talking and talking, talking, saying, like, I missed you, I want you, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, and, and Carol is standing there, and she she could ostensibly have a reason to be scared there, right? Um, in that situation where she kills him, uh, you could imagine if that was her only murder, uh, you could imagine, like, a cop going upstairs to investigate this and say, like, oh, well, what happened? Oh, clearly he broke down the door. Clearly, she had this like candelabra, and she killed him in self defense when he tried to rape her. And of course, the neighbor would have been, oh yeah, there was something very weird going on. There was a lot of ruckus, and that would have been the end of it, right? Um, so there's so many sort of like logical points and all these like interesting little tensions throughout. So when you get to the end point, it makes sense. Here, it just literally comes totally out of nowhere. Now you could say, well, of course, you know, symbolically, it's all about. Um, a woman that uh, hates the fact that she doesn't have a husband anymore. She doesn't have uh, the kind of relationship maybe with her son that, that she that she wants. Uh, for whatever reason, she doesn't want to have any other relationships. She has to make money uh, through prostitution. But those things in and of themselves, they don't lead to murder in a very kind of logical way. That explosion comes very randomly, right? It comes uh, uh, without reason. Right. And that 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 is supposed that is supposed to be the deep point in the movie, right? That is the point that you're ever supposed to go back and say, Oh my God, this says so much about, you know, male female relations, right? This says so much about uh patriarchy, but it's it's extremely forced, 